at the outset on behalf of the bombay disciples fraternity let me welcome each one of you to this special occasion organized in memory of one of the finest generals of the indian army in pursuit of commemorating the life and legacy of jan bhagat as you heard we had instituted a chair of excellence at usi in october last year today we stand proud to commence the first memorial lectures in this series in his reminiscence it is a singular honor for me to share a few thoughts on general bhagat whom we see as an icon and an epitome of professional soldiering and military leadership the charisma of general bhagat has undoubtedly left an indelible mark on the history of the indian army any attempt to reflect upon his life brings to the fore a long list of achievements that any soldier would aspire to accomplish the awe and reverence that every aspect of his personality evokes is truly inspiring and let me recall a few milestones from his life as a young second lieutenant as you heard general sharma mention he was the first soldier to have been awarded the victoria cross in world war 2 while clearing minefields under enemy fire with his vehicle encountering a mine explosion thrice where he sustained an eardrum puncture yet he went about his task relentlessly for 96 hours without break his then commanding officer had described the gallant action of the young officer as and i quote the longest continued feat of sheer cold courage a true model of junior leadership and raw courage he was later in 1949 as commandant of the bombay sapper center he carried out many innovations and improvements which really made the center and we of others one such change introduced by him was ensuring a common mess for all irrespective of caste which went down very well with the jcos and men now today's times this may not appear very significant but those days indeed it was his straight for unwavering equity steadfast commitment to impartiality and genuine concern for troops welfare endeared him profoundly to the men he led and um, earned him the title of apna sahib as the men respectfully called him in his stint as the chief instructor at the defense services staff college and commandant at the indian military academy his contribution towards mentoring and shaping the officers was indeed significant he was instrumental in writing a fresh all exercises at the staff college and introducing overnight outdoor camps for the student officers as commandant ima in the wake of 1962 war he was pivotal in overseeing the surge in the number of gcs from 700 to 1800 per year and ensuring fast paced fructification of corresponding or commensurate training capacities and facilities perhaps the most succinct and apt definition of officer like qualities was in his words to the gentlemen cadets and i quote do nothing petty selfish or mean be magnanimous be loyal be courageous and be a gentleman you will then be an officer in the true sense unquote his involvement as member with general henderson brooks in the post 1962 indo china war inquiry led him to travel extensively along the northern borders and study volumes of orders instructions war diaries and other documents the very next year the valuable experience enabled then major general bhagat who was posted as the chief of staff of assistant command to pen down key documents for the command from a very well informed 
perspective. Based on an incisive administrative appreciation for the reorganization and expansion of the command, he envisioned and planned a massive project for accommodation of troops in forward areas. It can be said that he had a significant part to play in setting into motion our earliest pursuit of focused capacity building in the Eastern Theatre. His panache for taking quick decisions under trying conditions came to the fore once again when he was the Army Commander at Lucknow and General Sharma also mentioned about it. In September 71, the city of Lucknow stood ravaged by unprecedented floods and the army was called upon to provide assistance to pluck the breach on the Gomte River. His orders to drive in trucks loaded with stones and boulders and push the loaded trucks over the brink from the edge of the embankment in fact did the trick as the heavily laden trucks sank into the breach and in turn plucked the flow of water. The following day, local newspapers captioned him as the saviour of Lucknow, reflecting the special place he had won for himself in the hearts of the locals. After the 1971 Indo-Pakistan War, 90,000 prisoners of war were to be housed in camps in Central Command. This entailed urgent construction of shelters, provision of amenities, putting the logistics in place, ensuring security arrangements and coordination of the overall effort. General Bhagat ensured that everything authorized to the prisoners of war, including canteen stores, postal facilities and medical cover, was made available in the true spirit of the Geneva Convention. In some cases, he even ordered accommodation occupied by own troops to be vacated for the prisoners. It hence was no surprise that Pakistani prisoners had only praise for the way they were treated in India and often remarked that they wished their own officers were like Indian officers in their concern for the welfare of men. As General Sharma mentioned, he took over the re-raised Northern Command in June of 1972. One of his immediate focus areas was to improve the road communication to the far-flung remote areas. It was his foresight and impetus that fructified in construction of the road through the Khardungla Pass within a year of his envisioning the project. A key task came his way during this time and it was the delineation of the line of control post the Shimla agreement. As leader of the Indian team, he went about this mandate and interactions with General Abdul Hamid Khan of the Pakistan Army in a very professional and forthright manner. Despite the entrenched enmity from the war fought just a few months ago, his tireless work ethic won the admiration of the Pakistani officers. His signatures on those two sets of maps, <coughs> each comprising 27 sheets, formed into 19 mosaics with the line of control marked, re will remain forever etched in history as the mark of a soldier who personified meticulous attention to details. After the command of the Northern Army, his next assignment was the chairman of the Damodar Wali Corporation. Now, with his characteristic vigor, no nonsense approach, as well as down to earth connect with his subordinates, he got things moving at the corporation, which were rather sluggish till then. As you heard, the power generation capacity from an output of 45 megawatts increased to 85 within a month and subsequently crossed the figure of 700 megawatts. Unfortunately, 10 months into his assignment with the Damodar Valley Corporation, he breathed his last. The general's daughter, Ashali Verma, in her book, The Victoria Cross, A Love Story, 
eloquently conveys his impact on the team at the TBC by recalling the words of a Darwan who said to the soldiers who were trying to move the people during the funeral march, and I quote, don't hurry us, he was our general, uh, correction, it, he was your general, but for us, he was God, unquote. Indeed, the legendary general was a larger than life figure. He often referred to a stanza, which epitomized his attitude to life and death. And it reads, when the last scorer comes to write against your name, he writes, not that you have won or lost, but how you played the game. The affection, respect and admiration that the men he led, led felt for him was equally reciprocated by him. In his genuine care, unwavering loyalty and commitment towards his troops, perhaps a fine reflection of his unbreakable bond of bond to his men and the regiment or group can be found in his words during a talk at the College of Military Engineering in 1967 and which also formed part of the film that you just saw. And he said, one thing I can proudly state is that I am a Bombay sapper and not all can have the same luck or privilege. But the Bombay sappers was not only his, not his only regimental bond. In 66, he took over as the Colonel Commandant of the Sikh Light Infantry. And of course, this connect had its thread in history too, as the 21 Field Company of the Bombay Sappers, which was commanded by him when he received the Victoria Cross, had the same cast or troop composition as the Sikh Light Infantry soldiers. He gave the regiment a new elan with introduction of the flame of the forest in their turbans and lanyard, designing the present day bugle against the flame of the forest background as the shoulder title, as also a new belt buckle. He paid particular attention to nurturing the leadership and inculcating regimental pride. He, in fact, made it a point always to wear the regimental belt of the Sikh Light Infantry and have one officer of the regiment always on his staff. The Sikh Light, uh, Light uh, Regiment till today honors him through the regimental slow march tune the Prem Bhagat March, in solemn memory of the general who remained the colonel of the Sikh Light and, uh, Infantry till the end of his life. His courage, brilliance, achievements, commitment and selfless service to the army and the nation have left behind a rich legacy that continues to resonate in the minds of the Olive Green fraternity. <coughs> Most would have read or heard of the famous Red Book comprising personal instructions by General Bhagat, which he had issued as the GOC of the 11th Corps. That compilation, built over his vast experience, has certainly been a Bible for most of us in uniform. His articulate penning of thoughts also transcended into insightful strategic writings that fructified in publication of three books, which General B.K. Sharma also talked of. The reflections I have spoke thus far are, were but a few instances from the life of General Bhagat. His life has indeed been a testament to the values that form the bedrock of our army, and that is our commitment to Nam, Namak or Nishan. Today, as we remember him, it is but prudent for us to rededicate ourselves to these values and keep outstanding soldiers such as him as our beacon of inspiration always. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed privileged that our former Chief of the Army Staff, General V.P. Malik, would be delivering the keynote address and share his insight and perspectives on the life of a true legion. I, th I thank you all for being here today and gracing the occasion. Jai Hind.